Good morning, welcome to 852 Reboot Hong Kong. Today we're having the first episode in our series about retail. And I have the pleasure of interviewing Diego Dulcin Lacoste, the co founder of On the List, which is Hong Kong's leading members only flash sales website and shop. Hi, Diego, thanks for doing this interview. So Thank you set up On the List in 2016, you're now in Hong Kong, Singapore, Taipei, and Shanghai. Uh, as we can see from the environment, you started off with a physical shop. Now you mm -hmm. have online. Uh, the last year has been nuts for all of us. In Hong Kong, we've had the three Ps. We've had the protests, politics, and now the uh, COVID pandemic, which has hit us all. I wanted to ask you, how have you adjusted your business in these crazy times? Uh, so because of the COVID and, and before the protests, uh, not allowing people to travel in the city as uh, easily. So we push more and more brands to offer uh, online. Uh, so we do online and offline and sometimes it's the same offer, sometimes it's different offers. But yeah, now people can shop uh, uh, easily uh, online and get all the products uh, delivered at home or at the office, which is much more convenient. So was that your original business model to go online or was it always, did you start off with the concept of a, a members only kind of shop that people would come to? Because I've, I've queued up many a time to come in here and, and buy stuff. So we started offline uh, because the model that we replicate from Europe and the US was uh, mainly offline to protect more the brand image and to make it even more exclusive. But uh, now with the tech, it's easy to also get the same uh, exclusiveness uh, online. And uh, that's why uh, now with all the context, uh, we've pivoted and, and, and do more and more uh, online flash sales. How do you, on that topic of managing the brand, and you know, that especially you deal with a lot of luxury brands, right? Mm -hmm. How do you manage that, that same relationship in the online environment? I can, I can see it in the offline environment because it's, it's a members only, a bit like kind of bon privé type model. How do you, you manage it when you go online? So all the criteria of uh, offline, about who is invited, about what uh, they can shop in terms of pricing, in terms of quotas, uh, can be put in place online. So it was just development IT uh, projects uh, that uh, we've been working on uh, for a couple of years. And, and in fact, with the context, we just accelerate that. And I've noticed that, you know, across Hong Kong in the malls, you know, especially at the height of COVID, they were, you know, there was nothing going on. So does that mean that all the brands have been coming to you and saying, help, 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 we have no, we have no sales, we don't know what to do. Uh, have you been their kind of savior? Are you the, the main outlet for all of their unsold product? So as we sell previous collections like passes and goods, uh, we are not necessarily the saviors as you say, we wish, but no, yeah. uh, because, uh, they've been facing difficulties in selling the current collections. Uh, so maybe what they didn't sell this year will come to us next year or in two years. Uh, but definitely we are always keen to uh, exchange on, on what are the best practices in terms of logistics, in terms of payments, in terms of all the digital aspects. Uh, so there has been a lot of discussions going on uh, with, uh, yeah, with uh, the COVID. So what, what, what have you learned? I mean, what have been the, the main things you've learned about you know, running a business that has a you know, omni-channel physical and online presence? I mean, you still, mm -hmm. you still get people queuing up to, to come in. I guess they are all keeping their social distance. I know you manage the amount of people that come in. Mm -hmm. So what would be some kind of key learnings that you could share with, with other people in, in the retail business? But always listen your customers. Uh, so on the list members have been super uh, nice to share what we can do in terms of improving the customer experience. And so we've been inviting them for lunch and, and, and having coffees with them to, to really take all the ideas that they might have either for the offline or the online uh, experiences. And that's why uh, uh, we feel like uh, we need to be more and more customer centric uh, because uh, there's so much to be learned from them. Uh, and, and to understand what are the priorities. Is it to get faster deliveries? Is it to get more products? Is it to get more discounts? So of course, it's always a combination of all those requests. Uh, and that is just to put them in priority. Uh, and uh, yeah, so one advice would be uh, talk to your customers and make sure that uh, uh, you, you can put in place maximum of those ideas. And your, your, in terms of your kind of presence, you have, we can see on the screen behind you actually, you're on Instagram, Facebook, mm -hmm. you have a website, and you have a mobile app, right? 
Yeah, so the idea behind that is just to communicate and not only in one way, it's both ways uh, to, to, to hear from the customers and, and, and social medias have been fantastic since the beginning because I remember when we were just starting, uh, we were receiving a lot of uh, messages, uh, either questions, either comments, uh, feedback and, uh, and I feel like uh, it's more and more important to listen to your customer because they, they need that and they want uh, you to answer to whatever questions they might have. What kind of strange uh, comments or requests have, have people come up with? I know you have kind of VIP tiers, so sometimes there are giant Mercedes Benz or Rolls Royces parked outside your shop. <laughs> no, so, no, no, <laughs> or helicopters maybe. No. Well, have you okay, found, so you, a, now, now, that, you know, now that you're active in, <laughs> you're active in Singapore, right? You're active yeah. in, in Shanghai, you're active in Taiwan. Luckily, you know, these are all uh, markets that have dealt with uh, the COVID pandemic very well. So mm -hmm. um, what kind of learnings do you see by operating across multiple markets? Uh, again, uh, the customers are not the same everywhere. Uh, they don't necessarily aspire to the same brands uh, in terms of sort of uh, you were asking what are the crazy uh, request so we open at 8 a.m some people were saying ah we, can we open even earlier so that i can really be on time at the office um, and yeah everything is possible so we have a business model that is easy to test new ideas so we always try to uh, yeah uh, try them on and see what's uh, the feedback and, and and if they are good we can put them in place locally or on all the markets and I, what yeah. I find interesting is, you know, if you look around behind you in, in your shops, it's known for fashion. You started this business mm -hmm. to tackle the fashion industry, especially sustainability, right? Mm -hmm. um, why, why sustainability is because we're really the last uh, distribution channel. Uh, mm -hmm. Usually what we receive is what uh, they didn't sell in the stores, in the outlets. And that's why we can offer those discounts is because really uh, we are the last stage and, and, and usually those items that are perfectly new might be disposed and, and for us it makes no sense as a consumer because they are super qualitative items from fantastic brands and, and that's really the idea behind on the list is to solve this problem in terms of uh, sustainability uh, and to make sure we uh, invite the right customer uh, so that we don't cannibalize uh, the full price stores of the, of the brands and uh, it's a win-win for you and for the customer because they stop buying in, uh, fast fashion that is we know it's the problem in the fashion industry and uh, we can, they can discover qualitative products that will last for much longer. And for the luxury brands, they also have a new customer that is usually younger, that discover the brands, and that might become uh, a brand lover in the future. So uh, that's, we're just in the middle to connect the dots and, and to make sure uh, we, we do things. So we're running out of time. What, uh, what would be your, your two pieces of advice? Maybe something to do and something not to do in order to kind of survive or pivot your business if you're in the retail industry? Uh, brainstorm with your colleagues in the industry, with your customers, always discuss, go with new ideas and then put them in place because there is no uh, uh, bad ideas. The only worst case scenario is that uh, you just keep that idea if you see the, the impact is not there. Uh, and yeah, everyone has so many different point of views that. Uh, there's always something to take from it and uh, of course the environment is challenging uh, but there, there are always opportunities so it's important to just yeah, uh, make it happen. Thank you Diego, good Thanks to talk to you. So people find you on the screen behind you but the uh, URL is on the list .hk correct? Or .asia yeah. .asia. Both Excellent. Yeah. Thank you very much.